Introducing the all-new Western Enforcer V-Plow. Engineered with all the features, efficiency, and performance of full-size Western V-Plows, built specifically for your half-ton truck. For more information, visit westernplows.com. Mike Bott from Frost Solutions, one of the owners of the company. What we do is provide a mini weather station to give you a tailored forecast to those particular locations so you know where and when and what to do in those parts of town. You know there's two or three or four or five different ways that people can experience tremendous value uh, having a technology like this. Welcome to The Entrepreneurial Journey with your host, Dave Westcott. The Entrepreneurial Journey is a weekly podcast that streams live every Tuesday at 9.15 a.m. Pacific on Dave's YouTube channel and LinkedIn profile. Now here's Dave with this week's episode. Good morning and welcome to The Entrepreneurial Journey. I'm your host, Dave Westcott, and I have with me today special guest, Aaron Torito. Did I get the last name done right? You did. I've been called a whole lot worse, so... That's good. Right. You know what? It's always the most stressful thing that I do is getting the last name right. And uh, before we before we kick off the call, we us I usually practice it a few times. But we were laughing so much that I forgot to practice uh, the my pronunciation. So uh, if I did have it off, I apologize. Uh, I'm super excited about today's show. Um, Aaron is the principal uh, of a financial planning and wealth management business. Um, I think they're great guys. I'll let him do his own introduction. But today we're going to talk about financial planning. And I think as an entrepreneur, as a CEO, or even as a worker in the field or in at the mall or whatever you do, Boeing, it doesn't matter. Having good financial planning is absolutely critical in your life. And I learned one thing, and that was I must have been 35 or 36 and it was the it was the like the first time we had a financial planner a guy similar to Aaron come into our business and do a financial planning for our office and just you know share with them about financial planning and it was so eye opening because he shared like this is how much money you have to save every single month to be able to retire and if you are age x y z you have to save 10% 15% 20% of your paycheck to even catch up and if you want to retire at 65 or 60 you need to have over 2 million dollars in the bank just to last you and you start to think about the gravity of that, and it's like, oh, my God, why didn't I start saving when I was 18 years old? I am absolutely a chicken cooked in the oven right now. And, uh, and so after that, I said, I got to find some guys to work with, and that's when I met Aaron and his dad, and, uh, and that's where we are today. So I want to introduce Aaron. Aaron, tell us a little bit about your business, your background, um, the name of your business, all of those things that are really important to our listeners here today. Yeah, so let me start with the name, and then you can uh, tell me if I forgot anything I was supposed to cover. But the name is TFS Advisors, and, and to my dad and I, TFS stands for Torito Financial Services, but it doesn't have our last name in, to, in it. So it's kind of the acronym that we use. And so the way I got into the business was after, after high school and college, I decided to join the military. I was off in the military for about eight years. Uh, spent eight years, did, you know, almost four years overseas, three of those in combat. And, you know, uh, after that, I said, you know, what do I want to do after this? And, and so my dad, you know, started a financial advisor practice back actually before I was born. And so I kind of was ingrained with this stuff, since, you know, literally day one. And, and uh, realized how important it was. When I was in the military, I really, one of the reasons I did it was because I really liked helping people. And so my plan when I got out was I was going to go into law enforcement. And uh, I, I decided not to do that uh, just because one of the reasons I got out of the military was because of how hard it was on your body. And so I decided, you know, I kind of want to see more about this business and see if it's something that I would like to do. And so um, I actually joined... Uh, my father back in 2012, and now I'm the majority owner of the business. My dad is semi-retired um, and, and bought in and bought the practice, uh, parts of the practice from him. Um, but 
the importance of this stuff, like Dave said, is the sooner you start, the better you are, right? The sooner you start, the less you have to save. And so my goal is to get to people and help people with this stuff, the sooner the better. Because a lot of people, honestly, especially when you're an entrepreneur, you're in the day-to-day and you're worried about keeping the business afloat and not worrying about this stuff because, again, it's not your area of expertise. And so did I kind of cover most of that? Yeah, that was was fantastic. No, you know what? You did a great job. You're a natural on here. And... uh, you know, we might I call it, it uh, we might call it TFS podcast if it keeps going this good. But uh, <laughs> you know, it's a good time. I actually have you yeah. in my phone and my computer as TFS. So, you know, there it's you and I always thought it was Total Financial Services. I missed the I missed the last name at the end. So I'm sorry about. No, I just I that was a joke. I made that up. Um, you yeah. know what though? No, you talked about some really good stuff. You know what? And I, you know, I think a lot of the guys in the service industry, I, you know, my business, my day to day business is, you know, construction related fields, general contractor. And I mean, you know that we've been, you know, friends a long time now. And so, uh, you know, one of the things that I see in working with subcontractors, I see this every single day and not a day goes by where I don't see this. And I'm probably you know, really good friends with a handful of subcontractors that work with me, that have worked with me for over a decade. And, you know, these guys are anywhere between the ages of 60 to 70 years old right now. And I'll be honest with you, man, these guys are incredible at their craft. They do an amazing job. They've been running their business, you know, 25, 30 years. And you know what? They, they they listen to what you have to say and they say, Aaron, how am I supposed to put anything away when I'm still trying to make payroll? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, and so one of the things to that, you know, is you're going to have to, sometimes you have to give things up, right? Sometimes yeah. the, the lifestyle that you live, you have to sacrifice some of it today to then be able to live a better lifestyle in the future. And, and just, hard decisions to make, right? There's no, there's no right or wrong, but if I went in and tried to be, you know, tried to, you know, build an outside entertainment center, you know, no one would pay me for it because I would be miserable at it, right? (laughs) I would not be good at doing it. Right. Right. And so my belief is that we go out and you hire the experts in the field, just, just like you, Dave, in your business, you hire the best subcontractors for whatever type of work you're, you're looking to do. And that's kind of how we look at it in business. I would I would fail at probably 99% of the listeners' businesses on here, but I'm really good at financial planning, and I'm really good at helping people navigate through it. And we all just have to be honest with ourselves and know our area of expertise. And so giving things up sometimes is some of the hardest things to do, but again, it'll pay dividends in the future. You know, I love that giving giving things up is is something that you got to do. I think, you know, a great piece of advice that I when I got from you guys when I came in and met with you was, listen, you know, it it doesn't have to be the biggest plan in the world today. Like it can start with fifteen hundred bucks a month. It it's just it's starting to invest. It's starting to put money aside. It's starting to, you know, be able to do that slowly but surely. And I think that's a that's a really important tip. But you know, for the guys, the entrepreneurs who are older today, the guys who you know are in their late fifties, early sixties, they're still out there grinding. Their knees are getting sore. You mentioned, you know, you left the military. Um, one of the reasons was just the physical totality it took. You know, a lot of the service providers out there, you know, the 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 abuse on the body is real. And um, what would you what would you suggest to somebody who's a little bit older, who hasn't put the money away? What what kind of investment strategy are they looking at? How do they get to retirement? How does that how does that happen? Yeah. So so the way we look at it is on an individual basis because just because uh, let's just say Dave, your situation, your lifestyle may be completely different than your next door neighbor. Right. And so with financial planning itself, it, there's not one right road. Okay. There's, there's a hundred different right roads. You just have to be able to stay down one path. And, and the fact is, is your path is going to be different than your next door neighbor. So just getting started sometimes, like you said, is the hardest part, putting away something 
is better than honestly a lot of people out there. You see articles all the time of, you know, 90% of retirees out there have only saved 20 to $50,000. Wow. Unfortunately, social security um, is not what it was when it initially came out, right? Where it could subsidize a lot of your working income. You, you need to start saving for yourself. And so, I mean, even if you are 60, it's never too late to save. You just have to start putting something away. If you're working and you're not, you know, running your own business, I always tell people when you get a raise or when you get a big job, right, that you're not used to getting, set some of that money aside because you'll never miss it. You've never had it, right? And so that's an easy way to do it. Setting up an account, putting it into something that you just don't touch, and, and having a trusted person that you can bounce ideas off of is the biggest thing. You know, being able to put that trust over to somebody else so you can focus on your business because, again, that's your best asset is probably your business, and it's probably your biggest asset. And on that point, a lot of people, sometimes in the trade industries, their main, you know, people don't think there's a worth to their business. A majority of businesses have some sort of value. Okay. If you're in the business and you're working in the business, you're either you're you're gonna be one of two things. You're gonna think your business is worth more than it may actually be, or worth less. Okay. Normally people don't have that right on the dot. Okay. And so as an entrepreneur, your biggest asset's probably your business. And so you want to get that valued by a professional. And that's not something I do, okay. But there are companies out there that can value your business because, again, at some point you're going to have a liquidity event and most of your retirement may be tied up in your business. And you know what's cool about that? Like, I, I love that because even if even if you're a guy who's, you know, in the 50s, 60s or whatever, and let's say you've it's only you or it's only you and a couple of guys or you and a couple of trucks, like even if it's a small family business – like a lot of people out there who are younger are looking to pick up a small business like that, something where they can dive in, they can be hands on, they can, you know, they can really, uh, they can really focus and they can grow it to whatever they want. They can keep it the same or they can expand it, but at least somebody did the hard work and knocked down the doors for the first five or six years. And now they get, get to kind of come in and, and ride the coattails. So I love that. The entrepreneur who's 30, they're, they just, maybe they bought a franchise or, you know, they've just started a business and they're just getting going and, you know, they've got the next 40 years ahead of them, 30 years ahead of them. What is the, what do you, what do you see for that individual, that individual who, you know, they didn't have a lot of money to scrape together their business. They've, you know, they're just getting started out. They're just trying to figure things out. What is the, what, what advice would you be giving them today? Yeah. Set, set aside a specific, you know, let's just say you get a job, every job that you take, every job that you get paid on, set a specific amount of that money away. Again, you won't miss it. You never had it. And, and set that away for the future. Cause like you said, you're, especially in the trade industry, right? Your body's going to, going to be under constant um, toll. And at some point you're going to want to not have to do this. And so setting that money aside, getting it in, having that trusted person that you can run information by. Um, because again, one of the big things is how do I invest? What do I invest it in? Each person is completely different. Okay. And there's a lot of salespeople out there that have the best things since sliced bread and reality when it actually happens, it's not the best thing since sliced bread. So again, finding that person you trust before you actually need the help a lot of times can help. Where can you find that person you can trust? Ask your friends, ask people that have already gone down that road. You know, um, if, if your friends trust the person more than, and you get along with those people more than likely, you're going to get along with whoever they trust. Um, and do your homework because again, not all advisors are the same, right? Um, I, I'm not a perfect fit for every single client out there, just like um, another advisor is not a fit for clients that I have. And so find somebody that you can trust, find somebody 
that you can share things with. Again, with our clients, a lot of times we hear stuff from them that their own kids don't even know. And the more your advisor knows, the better they can help. But yeah, that's awesome. Early, starting off early for that 30 year old, I mean, again, is the biggest issue because the earlier you start, the less money you have to actually save to get to the same end result. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's fantastic. Uh, we're going to take a, a quick just thank our sponsors here. Just uh, you know, really love working with Western Snowplows. Western Snowplows has been uh, fantastic for us. We use them on our trucks. They keep the roads clear, the parking lots clear. It's a great product. We absolutely love working uh, with Western. We are we are running the Western whiteout plows on our trucks. I love the scoop ability. I love the the quick ability to plow and clean the parking lots. Uh, Frost cameras has been an an awesome addition to our business as we're able to get ground temperatures and actual certified snow totals um, from the cameras um, that really give accountability um, to our customers. So we thank you uh, for being sponsors of our show. We really appreciate that. Um, Now back to the task at hand. Who is in the picture behind you? Or do you have to Whoa. look and see the the picture Which right one? behind oh. you? The right on the on the other side. I'm pointing on one side. He's pointing on the side. Right directly behind you. There's like a big kid and a little kid. It's kind of an that's older my, photo. That's my here. Yeah. That's my brother and I. That's your so, brother and you. I, I'm the one with my tongue out, the little one, and that's my older brother. Oh, that's cool. Out at Fort Casey, actually. Fort Casey. So yep. the your practice, it just feels like you got a lot of family stuff going on there, from the the footballs in the background and the pictures and the like. What is the environment of your organization like? Yeah, so so we like to bring entertainment and fun to financial planning because it can be a very boring topic, right? And so, um, and and again, a lot of our clients become friends. Okay, or a lot of our clients were already friends. That's why they're clients. And so we like to have a really good time and, and just connect people um, so that they can be better served, honestly, because we know where we can help. We have attorneys that we can refer to and all that stuff. And the more we can help an individual, the better off they are. So, yeah, that's Dale, awesome. Dale and I like to banter back and forth. And so I know I know you've probably heard that once or twice. That's maybe. what I love I about apologize. you guys. I apologize for not coming in my tiger outfit that, <laughs> that you saw me in for uh, Halloween. So. You know that was an exciting uh, that was an exciting outfit. I, I bet the you know you'd have driven the ladies crazy. Um, but you you know you said earlier sometimes you got to give something up. And so yeah. at this particular point, you gave up the costume. We're not doing okay. the cos. We're not doing the cosplay thing today. Today we're rolling a hundred percent. Business professional. Yeah. I'm, yep. gl- I'm glad you Fine. agree. I'm glad you agree. So you <laughs> mentioned something really cool. Like you said, hey, you know, you have a lot of resources. And I actually wrote down on my notes before to talk about that was like you bring a lot of really key people to the table. Like, you know, good CPAs, you know you know, um, good trust attorneys, you know, a good legal representation as you, you know, grow in life, you're going to have legal events. You're going to have events around, you know, setting up trusts or 401ks or, you know, life insurance. You, you, you're going to have a lot of these things that come up. And so kind of that idea of the wealth manager is to not only help you look after your finances and, and direct them in the right way, but also to help give you a tip uh, on some of those other services that you're going to need services where, you know, the people you've vetted them, worked with them, they've got a good reputation. Talk to us a little bit about how that works or how you help fill those gaps with the needs, um, you know, of, of entrepreneurs or business owners or whomever. Yeah. So, so our goal is to be not necessarily a one-stop shop, but, uh, let's say a client, has a need and they call us up. We want to be that person that they call up so that we can help them and say, Oh, that's a legal matter. Oh, we have, you know, an attorney for that specific type of, of, you know, legal advice you may or may not need. We don't get compensated by the attorney. We just know that the client will be well taken care of. And so we want to be that person that can say, Oh, Hey, here's the people you need to talk to. 
it's your decision on if you want to work with them or not, but we have a lot of mutual clients with them and we know you'll be well taken care of. We know when to tell people, hey, that's not our area of expertise, but here are some people that we see as experts in that field. And again, that's just as important as having, you know, because the investments are the investments, right? Right. The investments can be run by a computer. That's not where financial advisors, in my opinion, add value, right? Um, where financial advisors add value is they can, a computer can't tell you the pitfalls, okay? I can help lead you in the right direction so that you don't make the same mistake that I've seen somebody else make before. A computer will only tell you what you ask it, right? Right. And you're a lot of times not going to know the questions to ask. And so that's where we come in. We'll meet with clients and their attorneys together to, to ask the question. We'll meet with their CPAs. Um, you know, we'll meet with all their, their experts if, if they uh, would like us to. So. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a, that's a really good connection. Um, what, you know, what are some of the biggest uh, misconceptions about working with a financial advisor in today's market? I mean, because like kind of the way that I thought about it was like, oh, man, I, I don't want to talk to those people. Those, those, those people only talk to wealthy people. I'm not, I'm not wealthy enough to talk to a financial advisor. Yeah. So the thing I always tell people, I love the, the wealth conversation because – my definition and your definition of wealthy are going to be completely different. You know, my definition of wealthy could be over a million dollars. Your definition of wealthy could be over 10 million or half a million or whatever, right? It's all in our head. There's no specific definition of wealth. What some of the misconceptions are, you have to have some specific amount of money. Okay. You have, and, and our belief is yes, the money has, there has to be something to invest, but there also has to be, more than just the money. I I want I don't want a client that I just manage their money. I want a client that I feel I can help. And helping is a whole heck of a lot more than just the money. Right? Yeah. And so that that's a huge misconception uh, that people think there's advisors out there that'll help every asset level, right? Some you have to start somewhere and it doesn't make one better than the other. It just means that at that point in your life, here's an advisor that can help you at that point in your life. That's a huge misconception is that people don't need an advisor. And in my opinion, you know, everyone at some point could use it because again, um, none of not, unless you're in the industry, you don't have the knowledge behind it to help prevent some of the mistakes. And it, and it always looks a lot easier looking in the rear view mirror than when you're actually living through it and, and doing it. Okay. If I, if I knew an investment was going to return 20% after it had already happened, of course I would throw all my money into it, right? Because yeah. I already know the end result, but the reality is, is you don't. A lot of people invest looking in the rearview mirror and it comes back to bite them. They look at, hey, what did the best, you know, before, not what's, you know, could be doing the best in the future. So um, other, other misconceptions that I see um, – you know, are, it's all just about the money, right? A, a lot of people think that it's financial advice is strictly, here's how your investment should be made. And again, um, it, if that's the case, I don't think you're looking at a stockbroker. You're not looking for a wealth advisor, okay? Because a wealth advisor does a whole heck of a lot more, in my opinion. And, and again, you can get all that advice basically for free. You know, if you're just looking for stocks nowadays. Yeah, that's that's great. Uh, that's great information. I think that uh, it's you know that's really really true. One of my favorite questions to ask on here is, you know, well, I'm gonna back up. You're an entrepreneur, and yeah. you you are just you know, you are you have been in this business for, since 2012, so you've been doing it for over a decade, and um, you know. Business is not easy, no matter what level of business you're at, whether you're a wealth manager or a lawyer or a CPA or a guy who mows lawns for a living. Like, it's it's tough. You know, for our listeners, what's one of the toughest things that you've overcome in business along your journey? Uh, so, so one of the big things, uh, in business, 
honestly, that was hard initially was working with family. Honestly, mm. was yeah. um, you, you know, cause at, at work, it, it used to be the father, you know, before work and before we're in business together was the father son relationship. And if you take that into the same environment when you're working together and, and it's not going to turn out well. And so, um, us learning how to work together, uh, was, was a big thing and, and we do great now, you know, uh, wouldn't change it for the world. And, and that's probably the biggest thing. And then also keeping your head up during the ups and downs, right? That, that's, uh, that's a hard thing to do sometimes, but knowing that there's light at the end of the tunnel and then just keeping that outlook out there. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, your dad is an awesome dude. I love him. He's hilarious. He cracks me up all the time. But but he's a he's a big fi- like he's a big figure, right? Like he's a uh he casts a shadow, right? You know, just he's he's yeah. funny, he's loud, he's been doing it a long time. He was citizen of the year for Edmonds, right? I mean, right? He was. Citizen he of was. the year. Like this guy has done a lot so i can kind of see like working with your dad and then being his son and then hey aaron do this hair do that like i can see that really being a tough a tough thing um and and you've handled it well and you've and you've taken over majority ownership of the business you know for any any man or woman out there who's working with you know a similar situation second generation owner that's what you are and you know what advice would you give them in working with their parents or grandparents or other family what what is kind of that what is that thing that really just helped you get past that tough moment or you know was it boundaries was it community like share with our audience how what tip you would give to them if they're you know in a similar situation so big one open communication right? Be feeling uh, comfortable and confident to share certain things with each other. Okay. And the biggest one is probably finding somebody that's already been through it. So um, luckily we had another, you know, financial advisor friends that the son that I was friends with was the second generation. And the father-in-law was the one that the, the son-in-law was actually buying out. So asking and getting those experts that have already been through there to help us through the hiccups so that we don't go through the same hiccups. That was probably the biggest thing. And then having, we literally had probably, I don't know, quarterly monthly calls with them sometimes and having a business coach. So we have multiple business coaches. And and so having a business coach again, to help guide you through the path of they've helped guide many people through before. And for us, it's our first time. So we, we've had business coaches too that help us through too. But I think having a father or a father in law and a son in law or a father, son, daughter, father, daughter, mother, you know, in the same industry that knows the struggles of, of working together, um, just running it by them. Yeah, that's awesome. I think kind of a reoccurring theme that we're hearing here today is, you know, like you got to have mentors, you got to have people in your life. Like it, it doesn't matter if you're the 60 year old guy out there, you know, pounding nails, you know, you need that coach. You need that financial coach. If you're 30 years old and you're starting out, you need a coach. It doesn't even matter if you're the wealth manager. Hey, you're still looking to have a coach. You're still looking up to people. You're still getting advice and learning. And this idea of being a lifelong learner, this idea of having mentors and relationships help you along the way. I think is absolutely terrific advice because if you are going to take your business to the next level and grow, and, you know, or even your life, right? Even your life. Like we were talking about weight loss before the show, and you know, you shared, "Hey, man, I've lost fifty pounds," and I, you know, read the complete guide to fasting, and I read the book Outlive, and you know, I'm feeling good, and you know, like even even that takes support and mentorship, you know, even on my journey of losing weight and how am I going to get there and how, you know, wh- why do I keep gaining back? Like even these things, you know, as rudimentary as how we live our lives, you know, it's great to have somebody that's been there, that's done that, that's, you know, maintaining weight now, not losing weight and just how you're walking through those things. I, I really think that uh, you hit on something powerful there. Um, one more question. Cause you know, we talked about the bad, but 
you know, what's a big win that you've accomplished in your business ownership on your entrepreneurial journey? Maybe something that was kind of like, wow, I can't believe I did that or just kind of a, a big yay moment for you. Yeah. I, I think the biggest yay moment was one of them you kind of touched on earlier was kind of following in my father's footsteps and, hey. and kind of living up to it and then being able to live up to that and then exceed my own expectations and being able to, you know, um, land clients that, you know, five, 10 years ago, I would have never dreamed about. Right. Um, and just having that confidence. And again, one of the biggest things was the lifelong learner. So, um, I'm always out there, you know, my goal is to have more letters after my name than in my name. And so, <laughs> I, you know, I think I'm up to 12 or something after my name now, and I'm working on another four. And so, you know, I, I just believe in constant learning and getting better. And then again, that brings more confidence. And so those, those are my biggest wins, probably just, again, being able to secure and continue on in the business and have the business grow and stuff. And honestly, that was one of my concerns when I, I initially started. Yeah, that's an, that's an, that's awesome. So, you know, as we, we begin to bring this thing in for a, a landing, you know, I've got two final questions and maybe they're one question, but you know, what is, what does uh, building a retirement plan look like in today's age of just non-traditional retirement volatility stocks up stocks down people arguing about political this political that you know don't invest in gold invest in gold don't buy real estate buy real estate don't the stock market's dending tomorrow invest in stock you know all of this just craziness that we hear out there you know what is your advice uh to our listeners here today yeah so Everything you said, Jay, is a distraction that deters you away from your actual end goal of retirement. Okay? And so our goal as a wealth manager is to create a, a, a life plan and kind of a roadmap to be able to just not listen to all that noise that will always be there, such as the news, such as here's the best investments, blah, blah, blah. And our goal is to keep you think about, you know, you're driving down the road and you're on uh, you know, a bridge and on the ends of the bridge, on the sides of the bridge, you have guardrails, right? With those guardrails are going to be significant outperformance, significant underperformance. Our goal is to keep you down the center line. Okay. Which means you're always going to have something outperforming, always something underperforming, but our goal is to get you to that end result. There's going to be a lot of ups and downs throughout the way, but our goal is to create that path. So that instead of just looking at your statements and saying, oh, my accounts are down X percent or up X percent, this uh, plan is what helps guide you and helps make the investment decision versus our mind. Because our mind will play tricks on us, you know, every single day. And yeah. so to take your mind out of it is what our goal is to do. Because again, it's a very emotional, money is very emotional. I think my mind was playing tricks on me during the call. Okay. Like I'm, <laughs> I, agree, I agree with this a hundred percent, man. You know, yeah. um, this is true. Okay. So one other question for you, what's your favorite food to make? What do you make better than anybody else? I don't make anything. Oh, so come on, man. There's my, gotta be my one wife, thing. My, my wife has spoiled me where I probably cook less than five meals since 12 years we've been together. So, if I had to make if I had to make some, it'd probably be some on the barbecue. Okay, what on the barbecue would you make? Uh, I've actually I've made pizza on the barbecue before. That's pretty good. Okay, so I like to I like to order a, a, a pizza and then cook it on the barbecue. Actually, that is awesome. You know what? I actually like to do a pizza on the barbecue. I think that's a great idea. Listen, as we bring this thing in for a landing. TFS Advisors. These guys are awesome. Um, they don't just work with clients in Washington. They work with clients all over the place. I've talked to Aaron multiple times, and he's saying, I'm going down to Texas to meet a client. I'm going down to Arizona to meet a client. So they're working with clients all over the United States. If you're looking to really take your business to the next level, if you're looking for that financial support, that financial help, if you're really looking 
you know, to make sure that you have the proper planning in place so that you can retire comfortably. And I think a big point is not just retire comfortably, but live the life you want to live when you retire, not just, you know, clipping coupons and eating soup out of a can. And like, that's not a, that's not a fun, healthy retirement, but do you want the motor home? Do you want to travel? What do you want to do? Enjoying that life. Get with Aaron. These guys are amazing. I've been working with them for half a decade at least, and they will help you line out that plan, and they're a lot of fun. They like to tell a lot of jokes, so you have a good time in this whole thing. What's the tagline at the end of the email? I can't remember it, but you'll know it. Serious about your money, excited about your life. Yes, I love it. Serious about your money, excited about your life. That's awesome, man. Look at I'm so excited. I'm spitting on the microphone. Listen, any final <laughs> any any final thoughts for us today? Uh, the, the only thing I would say is we have a uh, monthly blog. So if you go to our website, which is www.tfsadvisors.com, or I have a LinkedIn profile that I post a lot of the blogs on. It's Aaron, J-A-R-O-N. Last name is Torito, T-E-R-W-E-D-O. I'm on LinkedIn. Dale's on LinkedIn. Same last name, D-A-L-E. You know, um, we're just out there to help people. Again, we have a lot of free resources on our website, especially for business owners and stuff like that. So feel free to check it out. And if you have any questions or want a second opinion, don't hesitate to reach out. Awesome. What's the number one tip on your website? What's the number one thing we should download? Uh, there is on the resource guide on our website, there is one specific there for business owners. So I think that would be a good one. Awesome. I'm going to check yeah. that out myself and see what's going on with it. Listen, I'm Dave Westcott. This is the entrepreneurial journey. Follow me on LinkedIn. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on YouTube. Follow me anywhere social. If you like this and this was beneficial, give us a like, give us a share. We love your feedback. Thank you for joining in on today's call. We will be back next week, 9 15 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's when we go live. Thank you so much. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you today. Aaron, you're absolutely wonderful. You have a great business. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Mike Bott from Frost Solutions, one of the owners of the company. What we do is provide a mini weather station to give you a tailored forecast of those particular locations so you know where and when and what to do in those parts of town. You know there's two or three or four or five different ways that people can experience tremendous value uh, having a technology like this. Introducing the all-new Western Enforcer V-Plow. Engineered with all the features, efficiency, and performance of full-size Western V-Plows, built specifically for your half-ton truck. For more information, visit westernplows.com.